Kane's an unbelievable manager. He's changed the way I look at football now. And he scored that goal at Ipswich. Now, here's, here's a confession for you. You've picked the ball up and I've gone, oh, not from there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Flynn just, he let me play with a smile on my face. He wasn't worried if I gave the ball away. He was just, he, as long as you work hard, get it, try and win it back. So welcome back to Life of a Kitman. Um, we've obviously got a super special guest with us today. Um, someone that was with us for a good couple of years at the start and has now moved on and is now just been promoted to the Premier League. So welcome to the pod, Scott Twine. Uh, Jonah's always with us, yep. as always. So say hi, Jonah. Hi, Jonah. Yes, there it is. <laughs> um, what we're going to do, as always, straight into Scott's five-a-side team. Okay, just before I do this, Steve, oh. I've got a little shirt for you to add to the oh, collection. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you like it. <laughs> what? Is that yeah. right? I'll tell you what we'll do. Oh, we'll take that one down. <laughs> we'll get Twiny right up here, early doors. What a shirt. There we go, what a shirt. <gasps> Actually, let's just have a look at this. Class. It's even got, oh, it's a nice little detail. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, right. There you go. Cheers for that, Twiny. Right. Cheers, Twiny. What a ledge. Great shirt. Um, you've got your counters. Yeah. So try and use them if you can. Okay. There's your pen. Yeah. Let's get straight into your five side team. Uh, in goal, um, played for him this season, Aaron Murich. Um, he's been unbelievable, to be fair, this season with his feet. Everything he's been asked to do, he's been, uh, he has been quality. Um, so, Murich in goal. Uh, so he played all season, yeah? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Had a couple of injuries, but yeah. Uh, Defender, tough choice, but I've gone Harry Darling. I was with him last year. M. Go Dons, okay. good mate of mine. So um, yeah, I'm doing him a favour here. But yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's getting in. Uh, and then two midfielders. First, uh, Josh Cullen um, plays for Ireland. With him at Burnley this season, great guy, unbelievable player. I think he got a um, player of the season for us. Um, players player anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, I think he deserves to be in. He's um, been brilliant again this season. Highest award possible, that player's player. Yeah. It's the best one. Yeah, it's, it's the best one, one everyone wants. It's yeah. the one you want. And then uh, next to him, Matt O'Reilly at Celtic now. is with him at MK. Um, great lad, great player. I think he's got a great future ahead of him. He's only young. He's only about 23, I think, now, 22. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll play, um, play at higher levels than uh, Celtic. I'm sure he'll even that. But, um, yeah, Matt O'Reilly in there. And then up front, it's a, probably the toughest one. Got loads of like Joe Rodriguez, Ashley Barnes. Um, but I've gone uh, Manuel Benson, who's uh, at Burnley now. He's a, he's a winner, really, but I'll put him up front in this team, especially as five aside. Uh, he's been unbelievable this season, scored some important goals for us. So, uh, yeah, he's in. Love that. Um, Gaffer? This is the toughest one. <laughs> uh, there's three that stand out Go for on. different reasons, really. Uh, Michael Flynn, he's okay. yeah. I think I'd, I'd like I could speak about him all day, to be honest. I yeah. still speak to him now. Um, legend. He's. I think he gave me my first like first manager that really, really believed in me. I think yeah. gave me my um, gave me my breakthrough at, uh, in professional football. So um, yeah, it's between him, Liam Manning, who's at MK. Um, Russell Martin signed me, um, went to go Swansea and Liam Manning came in, was brilliant with me, spoke to me a lot, helped me out a lot and um, had some great success with him. And then um, obviously Vincent Company. Uh, it's incredible. It? Yeah, how he's been this season, it's changed the way I look at football, how he's, how he's come in and uh, spoke about the game and how we train, the games we like prepare for. It's, uh, he's a genius, to be honest. Uh, so I'd probably... I'd, I'd have to go for him. I'd have yeah. to. Yeah. Um, you have to. Yeah, have yeah. to. So I'll put Vincent Company. I don't know what the gaffer's going to feel about him choosing company. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're it's yet all to, right. And we're yet to meet Flynn, so it's good that you've got. Have you not met him yet? No, we haven't met him yet. So uh, yeah. Great guy. Uh, one last thing on your five side team. Yeah. If the team had to wear a kit that you've played in in your career, yeah. which uh, kit is your favourite? 
and which one would they play? Um, I didn't prep him on this either, no. so this is like um, off the top of his head. <laughs> I'd actually probably say, just because it's a bit different, the Newport one, just the yellow one, home yeah. kit. Really like that. Really like good, good memories in it. Um, I'd probably say that one, Newport home kit. Perfect. The season I was there. It's good that. Yeah. Um, what team? What team? Because you're looking basically championship players all the way through, mm. promoted to the Prem, playing in Scotland in the, you know, in the so, Prem up yeah. there, like unbelievable. It's a good team. That I like what you did as well. You've picked a player based on it being a five-a-side team. Yeah. Yes. I love yeah. that. I love They're that. He's just gone good on the big board, name. Yeah. He's gone, right, we're playing five-a-side here. Yeah. We need to win. Yeah. People don't normally think about it. They just go, oh, who's the biggest name or best name I yeah. can put in? They don't really think about the five-a-side team. Yeah, no, that's definitely yeah. a five-a-side side team there, yeah. I was back, I was back then beat, beat most five-a-sides. Oh, they've they been good, yeah. Company. Just, <laughs> oh, you say he's a genius. Just, like, enlighten us a little bit, like... So, uh, just in terms of match prep, different for every game. Um, we have our things we work on, but then the, the pressing, the way we set up, the how we pass out from the back, how we play, how we're going to score against teams, it's, it's different for every team. The uh, like analysis he does is, is frightening, to be fair. Like, the hours, of, he much, must watch like hours and hours of games. Um, I think there's games this year we've, we've won, like, before the ball's been kicked, just because just of because everything. Preparation. Yeah. You know, this is going to sound mad, but what you're saying reminds me so much of Richie Wellens. Mm. Because every game was like that when he was gaffer, right? mm. As you know from being here. Like, yeah. It was just meticulously, we're playing this team, if we do this, we will beat them. Yeah. And then you'd watch it on the Saturday, and we would do it and we would beat them, and if we didn't do it, you could see that we weren't doing it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because he, like him and the analyst, uh, John, who was mm. with us for that season. Um, and the season after, was yeah. he? Yeah, he was there for a couple of years with us. They, they just, they were so meticulous with their detail mm. and what the opposition were doing. And obviously there's something in it because you guys have just smashed the championship. Mm. And obviously we smashed League Two that season. And yeah. Just, you know, there was games where you'd go into it thinking, well, how many are we going to win by today? Mm. And we had already won the game. Yeah. You know, so it's brilliant. Um, yeah, what a team. Yeah. Jonah, thoughts? Yeah, really good team. Really, really good. And like the choices. I like your choice of kit. Yeah. Yeah, like different ones. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting that to be fair. Yeah. No, neither was I. Yeah, I like that. But no, perfect. Right, so let's, um, let's talk about your career a bit more. I think it would be rude not to start with Burnley in this year. How would you sum up this season for you personally? Um... For me personally, it was it was tough at first. Yeah. First six months really tough. You had an injury at the start, didn't you? Yeah, got injured um, like the third or second week of preseason. Yeah. Um, just got back for the first game, and then the next day training, the same injury happened again. Yeah. That left me out for what I thought was going to be two, three weeks yeah. max, and then it was like three months. Yeah, um, just kept getting worse and worse. Um, but the team was flying. Yeah, the team top the league when I came back um, and then yeah had <laughs> the rest of the season speaks for itself won the league 100 points 101 points so yeah can't ask yeah, much more really unbelievable year for you um, how did the move sort of come about then when did you sort of first hear after you had an unbelievable year with MK Dons mm. but when did you first hear that Burnley were interested um, so my agent gave me a call yeah. um, just give me the heads up Burnley I'm very interested um, yeah. They think they're going to put in a bid, so um, then I spoke to spoke to the gaffer, yeah. um, and he he like to be fair, MK were really good with it. They let me let me speak to clubs, yeah. um, so they um, I spoke to to Vinny, yeah. and uh, I went up to Manchester, met him, and just like the detail he went in, yeah. it was no brainer. Yeah, yeah it was, I think that was the, the yeah. difference that him. Um, obviously, I had a trip around the training ground. The training yeah. ground's unbelievable. I remember seeing like a like a video on their socials of you getting there and meeting mm. everybody and just the fact that the gaffer was in the video with you and like welcoming you to the yeah. club and everything else. You wouldn't get that out of a club. So yeah. I think that just says something about how he creates that environment and that culture. Like, yeah, you know? definitely. I think um, that was like, as I said, the, one of the biggest things was him. Um, how, he, how he saw me playing there, how he saw the team playing. 
it was no surprise to me that we went straight back up. I know there was a lot of people saying Burnley might be in a lot of struggle, lot, uh, lost a lot of players, yeah. but um, yeah, as I said earlier on, like he's he's an unbelievable manager. He's changed the way I look at football now. Um, in what way? How so? Just little things like like the centre half playing it to the right back and like getting locked and end up playing it down the line. Like it. it if you watch Burnley this season, that never really happens. You never really are forced to play it long unless it's from the keeper and it's too much for press. But um, then we look for to like pass it long, not really just boot it long. Of course. Um, and it's like creating an overload every time, whether that's pressing um, or when we've got the ball, especially depending on how they set up, we'll we'll adjust. Um, yeah, and it's just I've not noticed that level of detail before. And it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely worked out. When, when was sort of the first moment then where you sort of, yourself and everyone sort of realised that, yeah, that you could go up again straight away? I think pre-season, we, everyone was still getting a bit to grips with it. Yeah. Um, Did you go away anywhere? We went to Portugal. Nice. Portugal. Um, that was a good trip away. Um, played Newcastle out there. That was a tough game. Um, we had two different 11s. I was injured at the time. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that was... Um, that was a tough game, and then the first the first real game where I think we were like, this is going to be a special season yeah. was the first league game, yeah. Huddersfield. We only won one nil, but I think the way we played, we dominated the ball. Um, Am I every, right in saying that you come on and sc- you um, hit the bar? Hit was the post, post, was it? Post, where yeah. were we? We were in Harrogate. We were in a hotel somewhere. Yeah, we what? were in Harrogate, um, and yeah, we had the game on, and you come on. And that was a free kick. And we, and we all sat there. Scott Lindsay was there, and obviously talk about when you were here. And then we see you step up for a free kick, and we're like, "Oh god!" Here we go. <laughs> and it hits the post. We're like, <laughs> "Yeah." So yeah. you come back from injury then, didn't you? And then, yeah. So how? And then you got injured again, did you? Yeah. So I, I literally trained like a few days before that. Yeah. Um, been out for a couple of weeks, and then the next day we were in. I think the game was on a Friday night, and yeah, the I Saturday think, we were yeah. in. Saturday morning, we just trained, and the players that didn't play much. Um, Training, I just felt it straight away. Tried like playing through it, um, and then the next, the day after that, I was just in agony. Really, couldn't really move, couldn't walk properly. Um, I didn't think it too much of it as a scan. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. I think it's just a grade two at the time, tearing my hip, um, and then it just like I'd come back thinking I was getting there, and then it would just like slightly go again tweak, again, tweak again. It wouldn't like, and it would just be like different areas. It wasn't the yeah. exact same muscle. It's just more frustrating. Than yeah, it. yeah, and it ended up being like three months. Didn't really get a, get a flow of games no. or anything like that. No, I didn't really have a proper pre-season. Um, so yeah, it was, it was frustrating really, but the team, as I said, they were top of the league when I when I came back, so that's like, they've done so well. But yeah. we're like seeing them every day, all the lads, like yeah. they're a great yeah. bunch of lads. Um, so that it, it was it was good off the pitch. Yeah. It's just on the pitch. It's frustrating for me because I couldn't couldn't play. Yeah. So we just spoke about that free kick then. Um, that obviously hit the post. But there was another free kick that you actually scored, and I can't remember. You have to correct me on who it was against, and you celebrated and slid into the uh, corner. West Brom. Yeah, yeah. That's it. West Brom. Um, <laughs> it was right at the end, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was eighty eight minutes. And like the right, celebration, yeah. like obviously you went mad. I know it's a late late um, goal. But you must have been buzzing, like with all those setbacks that you just said. Then, with injuries, coming back, and then having another setback. How was that um, scoring that goal? Yeah, it was. It was. It was good. It was more of a relief, to be yeah. fair, because I felt like I, well, You've I had been waiting for that moment. Yeah, and I'd done nothing before. Yeah. Like I'd done nothing. All the like good moments in the season. That everyone's yeah. had like everyone's had like great moments, and just felt it for me personally. I hadn't contributed anything. Yeah. So to get that winner. Um, yeah, it was it was massive. We had Christmas due after that as well, so I enjoyed it for a couple of days, yeah. which is good. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it was good. All the lads were brilliant with me as yeah. well. They they were buzzing for me. So what was the so obviously you played uh, League Two for Newport, which we'll come on to, and then you obviously come back to us in League One and did the season at MK in League yeah. One. What was, how big was the step up? Did you find in the games that you played in the Championship? Was it could you notice a big difference or? Um, uh, yes, I, I, know, into, really. got, I know League One, you've got some big stadiums now, but mm. Championship, there's some massive clubs and the football now is just so much better. Yeah, yeah, there's some massive teams in there and like the the physicality level is definitely yeah. like a lot higher. Everyone's an athlete in the Championship, I noticed yeah. that. But I think I was quite fortunate in 
in the way that the team that I've gone into Burnley, we had like so much of the ball, so it was it was like um, it was we had sixty percent of the ball every game, so it was mm. so good for me personally. So I didn't really um, feel like the f full physicality yeah. is it of it yeah. as I probably would have in other teams. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, definitely, definitely a, um, a, another level like step up. You say it was a perfect out. club for you to go to really in, mm. in terms of your style of play and. The way yeah. that you want to play. Yeah, definitely. I think um, the same as MK the year before. I thought yeah. like, that was the perfect move for me at that time. Um, I think a f like few people were surprised with the move, but I knew mm. I knew from speaking to the manager and the lads that they've got, um, it was going to be a great move. And yeah, yeah I think Burn Burnley was like the next. The, that was the next one that was perfect for me. I think. Yeah. Um, frustrating with the injury. I'm looking hopefully this season to get a good preseason in me and then yeah. playing more of the games. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So, obviously, prior to going to Burnley and having the unbelievable season that the club have had, and obviously, you know, it's been a bit start stop for you. Last season at MK Dons, there was definitely no stop. That was go 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 go. That's incredible. Yeah. Like it. Like we look at the Plymouth game where you score four goals mm. and they win five nil. Was it? Yeah. 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 Five nil. Yeah. Like it's those, unbelievable. Those four goals. But anyone to score four goals. Obviously, Charlie did it for us yeah. last year at Rochdale, but. I mean, for anyone to score four goals in one game, it was away as well. Yeah, right? yeah, that was, that was a it was a uh, bit of a sweet moment though, because we could have got promoted that yeah. day. Yeah. Um, we just needed uh, Gillingham to get a point against Rotherham at Gillingham, and we went into the game thinking that if we win this, we'll You're go up. Right. We thought yeah. Gillingham, because I think they needed a point or win to stay up as well. Um, so yeah, it was like special day for me. I think every everything clicked that day. Um, a five nil. Sorry, everything clicked that day, and yeah. yeah, just, just brilliant. And then, unfortunately, we didn't go up in the playoffs. But it was. So were you aware of what the result in the other game was, or did you not know until the end? Or did um, you get a feel off the crowd? Yeah, yeah, we could get a feel off the crowd because yeah. um, when I think we went one two nil up, the we were singing like we are going up yeah. and stuff like that. And then toward when we were like four yeah. five nil up, it it wasn't that. Yeah. Um, so we could kind of tell. Um, we didn't know for definite until after the game, yeah. but um, yeah, it was uh, it was still a great day. Um, I had some great memories there. That yeah. club, I'm, like so grateful for them as like, well. It was an unbelievable season. How many goals did you get? Twenty in the end. Assists. Thirteen. How many were tap ins? None. <laughs> <laughs> How many were inside the box? Probably yeah. two. <laughs> but I, I was just thinking of those goals at Plymouth. There, like from my memory, all they were all unbelievable goals. Mm. I did like the one where you picked it up inside the box and beat a man and then smashed it across the keeper into the bottom corner. Yeah. That was class. Yeah. yeah that was probably that. But yeah, you were spoke about so much here all all that season, just people like saying how well you were doing, everyone was following you. Yeah. yeah and everyone was I don't I, I don't think it was it's a surprise to a lot of us that had worked with you. Because mm. we had seen all the work that you put in after yeah. training yeah. and all that, so it wasn't a surprise to us. Yeah. But did you say twenty five goals? 20 goals. 20 goals and 30 13 assists. assists. Yeah. So 33 goal contributions in one season. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just mad. Yeah. Seriously, yeah, like, exactly those right. numbers are incredible. At such a young age as well. Yeah. Like. And, and considering, like, prior to that, obviously you had been with us, but obviously you were younger. Yeah. The team we had was full of, mm. you know, yeah. experienced pros. Yeah. We were top of the league. Yeah. It was a struggle to break into the team. You've had to go out on loan. You've gone to places like Chippenham and you've gone mm. to Newport and you've had a really good go at Newport. So good that we called you back yeah. in January and yeah. then you just took off yeah. when you come back. Mm. Like and then to go to MK Dons and back it up and be and have a season like that and then get your move on is Play testament year, to the work that mm. you know that you've put in really. Yeah. Mm. Because I mean we saw it. If we talk now about your time here. Like you've come through the academy. When when did you start nine? So I, um, I was at Southampton till under from under nines till under twelves, right. and then I came here. Um, I came here under twelves and was here all the way through until yeah. until I went to MK. You, yeah, you've broke in. I mean, you broke into the team before we were here. We came into yeah. the job, so that's how young you were. Like yeah, we've been here four and a half years now, mm. and you know you were already in the team. You were already at training every day. Mm. Obviously, at the end of training, it's obviously a cliche, and people talk about David Beckham, and people talk about Ward Prowse, and you know, taking a bag of balls after training and practicing and practicing and practicing. Yeah. We saw that first time with you. Every day, end of training, 
I'm taking a bag of balls. Yeah. We go and stand behind the goal. <laughs> We'd have to do nothing because they'd all end up in the top ends. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's he's perfecting this technique. Mm. And then obviously there's the game that no fans saw. Yeah. yeah but you've come that. back from your loan at Newport and you've scored that goal at Ipswich. Now here's here's a confession for you. You've picked the ball up and I've gone, oh, not from there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and you've hit it and it started going up and I've gone, oh, God, and then it's just dropped yeah. into the top corner. The most amazing goal. I mean, there's nobody in the ground. So me and him just jump out of our seats. We're like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Giving it one of them and there's nobody else around. So oh, it's on the telly and they've got, obviously, the fake crowd noise and everything yeah. else. But for us, there was no one there. It was silent. Yeah. So then... We've jumped up and all you can see is me and Jonah giving it. <laughs> Definitely the best like, role team in this job. Oh, just an incredible from from yeah. How, like, did you know from the second it left your foot? I knew, I knew I caught it well. Um, I knew I caught it well, but to see it, like, just dip in, yeah, it was... <laughs> I think that's the best goal I've ever scored. Yeah, the movement what was the commentary? It was something about the extraordinary is becoming the ordinary for yeah. Scott Town. <laughs> yeah. And we were just like... Because the first yeah. half of the season, you scored some really good goals mm. at Newport as well. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to touch on one thing quickly before we come off MK Dons. So, obviously, you had that last day of the season. Um, then you went into the playoffs against Wickham. Yeah. Um, what was what was the feeling then after the second leg when you, you obviously lost? Um, before the game, um, a few days before, we yeah. said after the game that families and friends were... Uh, MK Dons did like a, a do after the game where yeah. we were all as like a staff players yeah. family like have a few drinks win lose or draw it doesn't matter mm-hmm. um, unfortunately we didn't we didn't get the win but they were they were brilliant everyone's yeah. like really good mates there like yeah. the staff really close to the players um, sort of like the families to be there and stuff it was it was it was good um, obviously so disappointed we didn't go up or yeah even get to the, to Wembley because you missed out so narrowly on the last day I, yeah. I always see like it's always half a team when you just miss out mm. and Wickham were a really hard team to beat that year yeah yeah it was frustrating because they beat us 2-0 in the first leg yeah. and um, we went 1-0 up at, in, uh, quite early on mm. in the second leg in the home leg but um, just couldn't couldn't get that second goal they defended really well to be fair Keeper made some good saves mm. I think he got man of the match um, so yeah it was, it was frustrating but yeah. It had been a good season. Um, I think MK Dons, like everyone, all the fans, they they'd recognised it as a good season. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate we didn't go up, but mm-hmm. yeah, we we were we were positive. We we um, had a good time, and we like just got on with it. Really it's a good setup there as well, isn't it? Yeah. The stadium and yeah. Stuff obviously, like that. we were going through a similar thing in the same week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we yes. Obviously, but we won the first leg. Yeah. And then went there and conceded an early yeah. goal. You know, and then they've pushed on and we've lost yeah. our So yeah. we know what that dressing room feels like. Yeah. yeah so However it, you lose, it's, yeah, it's not ideal. Yeah. We, we, we struggled on. People always say it, don't they? Yeah. The best way to get promoted is in the playoffs. Yeah. It's the worst way to lose. Yeah. yeah. And not go up. Especially yeah. when it's on penalties. Yeah. yeah. I found. Did you watch? I was there. I was there. Oh, of course you were. Yeah, I was there. It wasn't, um, yeah, it wasn't nice. It wasn't nice, was it? <laughs> no, it was not. I think, again, <laughs> deserve to go, like, play. Like oh. outplayed so well as well. And I we were one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. In terms of how we played. Yeah. In the but first leg, probably should have been three or four now. It probably yeah. should have been done we as well. Conceded a goal here that yeah. probably shouldn't have conceded. Yeah. That's given them the impetus to yeah. mm. to go on. Um, but there you go. Things happen in the playoffs. And yeah. So that obviously sort of takes us back to your time at Swindon. Um, we we'll start with you coming back from Newport, mm. um, and then we go on to Newport. So you come back to Swindon. Um, we're struggling obviously a little mm. bit towards the bottom of the table. Were you happy to come back from Newport? Um, or how were you sort how were you sort of feeling when we, the call, you got called back? So I I didn't I hadn't heard anything from Swindon really. Yeah. Um obviously um Richie left in the um yeah. sort of November time. Sort of November time. And I hadn't heard anything um yeah. after that really, so I I didn't really know what was going on. Yeah. Um I was I was like focused on Newport, doing really well there. We we were um, top of the league, I think, so mm-hmm. doing really well. Um, I, I I didn't know it was a bit of a surprise yeah. in a way, but then not in a way just because I hadn't hadn't heard. Yeah. Um, so to call me back, um, came back, um, had a chat with the gaffer, and um, just said, look, I I, w- I was enjoying it. Like um, 
if I'm just going to play or, uh, sit here and not play, like I'd rather go back. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to play, then yeah, I'm I'm happy to stay. Yeah. And I, I did play. Um, unfortunately, we didn't stay up. Um, there's some good games that, that year, just not yeah. enough of them. It's, it's yeah. some good experience as well, because yeah. it was League One. Yeah. There were some big clubs. Yeah. You know, some big places to go and play. Mm. So, you know, you know, it's probably helpful for your development. Yeah. Looking at looking at it now, it probably was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just because of where you've gone on since that. Yeah. From that moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, and I still like enjoyed it, even though it wasn't. Um, it was near the bottom of the yeah. table. It wasn't nice every day like I still enjoyed it I still enjoyed yeah. playing cool. still got on with all you guys all the, all yeah. the lads were brilliant um, so it's still like I'm still loving it I still yeah. Um, but yeah it's just frustrating that we never I thought I th always thought we were going to stay up that year yeah until it was until you get until relegated yeah. and then yeah. it's yeah. nothing you can do about that it but we, did, we did have some <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we did have some good moments so still yeah. but how, imp how important was that low move for you then at Newport I think that was probably the turning point of everything really I think um, it's just after Covid and I, I worked really hard in, in lockdown yeah. um, and I came back like, really good yeah. came back fit best I've ever felt um, I remember you scored you, you scored a goal against oh, Coventry in pre-season yeah, 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 I remember yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that goal mm. unbelievable goal yeah. and I, yeah I felt good and then um, I was at uh, my girlfriend's house one day having dinner and then uh, Richie Ellens called me and just said um, Newport have come in for you on loan um, and at the time I was a bit like didn't like didn't have a clue how this would come about so I didn't yeah. even know I was being yeah. put for loan or anything like that yeah, like, yeah. Um, so it was like completely out of the blue um, and I just said like to Richie like um, well where do I like where do you see me this season yeah. he, he was honest he said like at the minute um, uh, we're going to bring in one or two more you I think um, there was uh, five or six attackers in front of me at that point so I um, went to Newport um, obviously as you know before Newport was just kick it long yeah. um, so I was a bit like I don't know where I'm going to yeah. fit in this but the, <laughs> the um, Michael and the gaffer spoke to me and was like we're changing changing how we're going to play yeah. and um, I was like why not go there um, see how it goes uh, trained for two days quite bad actually I wouldn't, wouldn't the best wouldn't one of my best two sessions, but then he, he stuck me in against Swansea, first yeah. game in the Carabao Cup. I think we won 2 0 or 2 1 that day, and um, yeah, the way we played, played, get the, got the ball down, yeah. played, passed well. Um, and the season just went on from there, really. Yeah. Started off really strong, and it, it just seemed to get better. We, we just kept on seeing, seeing it pop up, Newport. Like goal, yeah, time. Time. <laughs> and we were like, we were like, we're we can't of, score. We're, we're thinking What's like, going on? Yeah, we can't score. Why have we seen them out? Yeah. Seen them out on loan. We we all knew that inevitably, inevitably, you were going to come back. Mm. So we were all buzzing when you come back. Um, yeah, but yeah, just glad it glad it worked out. How many goals did you score at Newport? Because everyone was a banger. Right? So yeah. I, think, I was looking for montages and goals yeah. to put in a little Didn't thing you? that we were putting out when we yeah. were announcing yeah. this. And there were so many. I, yeah. I just had to pick four and be done with it. Uh, yeah, I think it was eight goals, seven assists. By, in half um, a season. Yeah. yeah. Like, again, incredible numbers. Mm. For like your first professional run of games, if yeah. you like. It's you have incredible. a little cup run as well. I think I remember you playing, did you play Newcastle? Yeah, that's played right. Newcastle. Lost on penalties to them, yeah, which, is, which was a tough one. But yeah, I think um, that, like, that move... Um, so I always like believed in myself, yeah. um, but like there's one thing believing in it in yourself, and then like knowing it that, mm. that you can that you can play at this level. And um, Michael Fling just he let me play with a smile on my face. He wasn't worried if I gave the ball away. Yeah. He was just he, as long as you work hard, get it, try and win it back. Um, really believed in me and yeah. gave me the confidence that I could just play so free. Um, and that's why I, I'll always thank him. I, I, regularly speak to him now I thank him for it's like it's good to hear so many good yeah. things obviously that the fact it that really he's just is. come in yeah. Yeah. and that he was good with like you at a young yeah. age yeah. it's really good to hear yeah. we've got a lot of young players that are still with yeah. us next year so it's good to hear all this mm. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't speak highly enough of him I, I was buzzing when he came yeah. here and I seen that I was what's, what's, him. Still a fan. What's, <laughs> <laughs> what's your um, memories of the year that we got promoted then from league to so that year it was just it was it was crazy to be honest. We were yeah. winning all the time. It was the, I've never seen the buzz around the town like it was mm -hmm. that year. Um, 
<laughs> Doyle and Yatesy up front, just ripping it up every every game. If it wasn't yeah. if Yatesy didn't score two, Doyle would have, and vice yeah. versa. It was <laughs> it was crazy. Couldn't they yeah. c- couldn't stop them. Um, and as you say, like it was, it was uh, like changing every Even day. The, the the standard of training, in my opinion, um, yeah. the standard of training every day was just was yeah. Just yeah. Everyone got on. Everyone. Everything was competitive as well. Mm. Yeah. It was always one team against another or an individual against another or a 2v2 or yeah. a 3v3. There was always competition in yeah. it. And everyone was striving to win every minute of every session. Yeah. Yeah, you know there'd be mean? like arguments in training, but then like yeah. straight after it would be like back to best mates again. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, it was good. I, I really enjoyed that year. You got a good handful of games as well. That yeah. Good. Yeah, I played. Um, I went, uh, I think it was February, I just went on loan to Chippenham, yeah. um, get some games there, and I, I enjoyed that. Um, Did you enjoy your loan to well. mm, Yeah, it got cut short from COVID, didn't it? But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that. Um, I think I needed like a, a good run of games then, and yeah, thankfully Chippenham took me and gave me that. Um, obviously, unfortunately got cut short here, but yeah. Um, yeah. still, we won the league. We had the celebrations on the pitch. Well, right you're, out, in the, yeah. you're in that picture. picture there. Yeah. That was that, a weird way to yeah. finding out on a, on a Zoom call. Yeah. Oh, do you remember <laughs> that? Yeah. The Zoom <laughs> quizzes that Hunter used to put together. Doing the yeah. quizzes on Zoom calls. <laughs> yeah. and finding out we're promoted and having a drink like yeah. in the kitchen. Mm. Sat in the garden with a beer on your own. Yeah. It's weird. Strange times. <laughs> weird Strange times. Strange times. Strange yeah. times. Um, just one more game that I want to talk about from the year that we unfortunately went down was after we were relegated, we went to Wigan on the last day of the season. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, when we have an away game that's over two hours, we'll go to a hotel, we'll stay overnight, we'll do all the prep, they'll have the meetings in the hotels, me and Jonah will go early to the ground and set up, all the rest of it. Um, for this game, because we were already down, because it was the last day, obviously the club didn't want the expense of putting people in a hotel the problem with that was that it was a midday kickoff 12 30 12 30 kickoff so me and jonah had to we were going to have to leave at three o'clock in the morning to get there and set up so we went up the night before stayed in the hotel um and then went early the next day but you guys came on the day so you must have left at like six seven o'clock in the morning yeah i, I can't remember the exact time but yeah it would have been super ridiculously early. early yeah and then we get there and we were losing no Yes, yeah. yeah. And then we spun it around, Twining scores two goals, both of them are bangers. Yeah. And we played so well that day. Yeah. And I was thinking, we were already down. Yeah, oh, if only we could have done this two weeks ago yeah. at yeah, Wimbledon and, or and at MK. Because you think if we had won those two games, sort of. Yeah, well, even one of them, yeah. I think we only went down by two points. It would have been yeah. a different story. I think only just one of those wins could have yeah. kept us up. But I just thought we played so well that day. And I remember the Wigan fans were outside the ground because they had stayed up. Yeah. And they were all out there with their flares and singing yeah. their songs. And, and obviously, Twining's just there banging gold from 30 yards. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it actually turned, it turned out to be a good game. But then after the game, everyone just yeah. disappeared. Mm. All the staff just yeah. went and got on the coach and yeah. they were done, all got in their car and went to wherever they were going. It was just me and Jonah in the change room with all the lads. Mm. And we were just like, right, lads, should we pack up weird, and go? Very then? weird. Yeah. Like, obviously, <laughs> it was really strange. The COVID, the year before the COVID end was weird. but... Like we we actually completed that season, obviously, yeah. but the way it ended was so weird. Yeah, like it's just after that day. Obviously, the club had the troubles that summer, mm. and we had to sort of start again with a new owner. But it, that from that day, it just everything just stopped. We didn't yeah. see any of those people again. Yeah, it, was weird. it was just really weird because literally the whole yeah. squad just left. Yeah, as there well, was it wasn't li- like there was people left over. No, there were six people yeah. left, and so everyone had just gone. Yeah, so it was just a really weird yeah. end of the season. But in the middle of all of that was this yeah. incredible game where we were 3-2 yeah. down and we won 4-3 yeah. and Twiney scored two and mm. like yeah it was all it was all a bit we also, of a weird we also watched you score a goal in the laundry room actually we took we got oh, a video yeah. we there's in, a TikTok of this yeah so, ba- <laughs> so basically when a game it's starts a game crew, we get all the kit from the warm up right. and we take it up to the laundry room and um, we sort of heard some noise like because the away end is just above the laundry room the so we had a look up we got a window in there we had a look and you were on a free kit. And it was, I can't, I can't it remember. It was against it. Crew, I'm sure it was. Maybe, and the keepers yeah. died to cross and yeah. just kind of and, Yeah, he scored a free kit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, up the Stratton back again, uh, in the top corner. Northampton, maybe? Was it Northampton? Maybe, yeah. Northampton. Northampton. That was one of my favourite goals. Mm, yeah. Just watching it from there. Yeah, just watching it out of our little window. <laughs> in the room. And we, yeah. Yeah, on, the, on the TikTok, we just go, 
Yes, get in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to the um, promotion year, then I think the reason we in the two, the reason we done so well, I think is the trip that we had to start it off. Obviously, it was our first pre-season tour in the mm. job. Um, we went La Manga. How important are those trips? Yeah, yeah, I think in terms of bringing everyone together. Yeah, I think um, I think you need it pre-season. I think everyone just getting to know each other. There's a lot of new faces. Haven't, haven't the other guys haven't seen him in a while. I think um, I think the trip out there that brings that brings the squad together, um, training every day, and then yeah, usually on the the last night or the night you have a drink together, which is which is good. Should we uh, so. should we talk about this? Should we talk about this story because we've mentioned <laughs> this story before and we've spoken about it. We've not added any names in. Um, obviously, we've spoken to Twiny before starting recording this and he's more than happy for us to uh, explain so it's the last night everyone's gone out we've all had some food we've all had some drinks players have gone off on their own staff have gone off and had you know whatever they've done the only rule is be at breakfast I think it was 7 8 yeah I think it was 8 o'clock yeah something at like 8 that. o'clock right do what you want tonight but be at breakfast at 8 o'clock we're training at 9 you're running so you know, use day. your brains, yeah. right? Half ten, what, whatever the time was, just, you know, <laughs> use your brains, don't be silly. So, we've obviously had a night out, we've gone back, I'm in bed and my phone's vibrating next to my head. I'm like, oh my God, what time is it? It's, it's already about 30 degrees outside, I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so I've answered the phone, hello mate. Hoops, um, we've been in a club, we've come outside... And it's daytime. We thought it was still going to be night. This is a problem. <laughs> so I've gone, right, okay, mate, well, where are you? Because I don't know. Right, okay, well, send me your location on WhatsApp and I'll get in a van and I'll come and find you. So th- at this point, Twiny's not involved. Yeah. yeah. Got no idea. Um, so we get in the van. We get in the van. We go and find the player in question. Um, but he stood with another player. And I'm like, okay, well, there's two of you. Then we look a bit further down, and there's another player, and then there's Scott Twine. <laughs> so. It was 20 minutes away from where we were. Oh my God, it was miles away. <laughs> and it was so hot. And there they are outside, sat on the floor, just baking. It was mad. So we put them all in the van. So I think two, one of them got in the front, and then three got in the back because yeah. we were like, well, we're just going to have to get them back to the hotel. Yeah. This can't be late. Yeah. Cannot be late. So we get back, we open the door, the player in the front gets out, he opens the side door. Another player falls out, another one climbs out, and we're like, where's Twiny? What's going on here? So Jonah goes around to the back of the van and opens the doors and sat there between two of these metal skips with his head leaning on it. He's obviously been bouncing off it the entire way back down the road. He is out cold, he's asleep. This is like, what is going on? And we're like, there he is. And it was Twiny just in the back. So we're all trying to wake him up. He gets out, falls over. And it was just like... There's a video of it. As well. Yeah, there's actually a video. <laughs> video yeah. There is a video. Do you remember the video? There's a player stood on his balcony yeah. having a coffee and filming us <laughs> yeah. as we get out of the van and players are falling out and doing backward rolls down yeah. a hill. And there you are in the back yeah, of the van. Yeah, what, what a start to the season that was. Unbelievable. But again, talking about that togetherness, yeah. that whole experience brings everybody together and doing things like us getting up getting in the van going and getting your yeah. everyone working for each other to make sure mm. that everyone's where they need to be yeah that was a real kind of marker for that group mm. everybody did that yeah I players for staff staff for players staff for staff mm. players for players everyone was trying to pull everybody in the right direction and make sure that we all achieved obviously we then went we had breakfast, we went training. Yeah. You lot had to run. Mm. Mildy was late. Yeah, he was late. He was running across some golf course. It's just a shame, man. Snakes. We didn't get the season see the season out and get to celebrate properly. But. Exactly that, because it would have been yeah. super. You've now seen it. The nice little we're bow on top. We're yeah. still waiting to um, have a yeah, proper we'll, promotion. We'll get there. Yeah. Um okay, so are we done with that part? Yeah. Right. So we've got a new feature. So we asked earlier on um, on the socials for somebody to ask a question. So everyone threw their questions in and we've picked one that Scott's going to ask me and Jonah. 
uh, and we will answer for you. And the person that asked the one that we've chosen wins two tickets to the first home game, which is Mark Kirkman, wins two tickets to the first home game of the new season. Whoever that may be. Whoever that may be against, because we don't know yet. <laughs> so, Scott, over to you. So, the question asked by Mark is, what is the best prank ever played on you two, and by who? Right. Who wants to start? Do you want to start? Yeah, I'll just start on it. So, it was the first day of the season just gone. Obviously, we spoke about it. We watched you come on against Huddersfield. Um, so, we arrived at the hotel, and we got there a few hours later than the players, because they went on the coach. And we, we went up in the van. van. Mm -hmm. um, so, all the key cards were obviously on a table. That's where they usually are in a hotel. Um, and obviously ours is the last key card. Anyway, we take the card, go up to our room, really nice room, we're on the 11th floor, um, and <laughs> well, Steve's, well, we don't know whose bed it was, but Steve always goes by the window, he had a mattress, everything there. I didn't have a mattress. There's no mattress. <laughs> and no pillows, none of that. Well, we're literally like, how have they not given us a mattress? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on we in had, this hotel? Had, There's no mattress. Yeah. We were like, what? We had no idea, like, anyone had done a prank on us. Until it just, like, there was more and more stuff missing. Well, he's there. led down and he's gone, hang on, there's no pillows. Yeah. We've gone, how can they forget a mattress and pillows? It's a hotel. Yeah. This isn't right. Yeah. So I was ready, like, I was fuming. <laughs> I was ready to go downstairs and get onto the hotel and be like, what, what? are you doing? Yeah. Where's the mattress? Where's the... But you, you went, I'm just going to go for a toilet, didn't you? So we, you go to open the, the hotel <laughs> toilet. Um, and the door won't open. So basically the mattress was wedged behind the behind door. the door so we can open it. And but eventually pillows. we got through, we turned on the light, mattress was on the floor, um, pillows and all like the duvet case and everything was just in the bath. And then we put a TikTok straight up because we were videoing the whole thing. And we were but just we had laughing no idea what was once, going on. Once we realised what was happening, we <laughs> just it. started laughing yeah, it there, was ridiculous. There is a video on the TikTok of it. And then about five minutes later, um, Harry McCurdy, who was the one that done the prank on us, FaceTimed me and was like, just Where's your didn't, bed, say, mate? didn't say anything and was just laughing. <laughs> and yeah, he'd been, he'd left, the key card was obviously on the table. So he'd, he'd taken it. And I said, well, who have you done it with? Who have yeah. you got to help you? And he's yeah. like, no, no one. I just, <laughs> I just did it on my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... He just decided he was going to do it, took the key card, went and messed around with our room. And then went back down and put it back on the table. But yeah, that was and the, nobody else knew he had done it. No, I think that was the funniest prank that had happened. Oh my just God. If, if you watch the TikTok video, yeah. we're trying to talk through what's happened and it was just so funny. Yeah. You can't watch it and not laugh. I think it's happened to us about five I or six times now. I thought heart attack at one point. Once on New Year's Day, Plymouth, our room had been tipped upside down. Everything was upside down. Yeah. You were there. Were you there? New Year's Day, yeah, I was there. Yeah. I was there. Yeah, yeah. 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 stayed yeah. in the hotel. So yeah. someone had gone in our room, Jerry Oates. <laughs> Um, <laughs> had gone in our room and everything was upside down. Yeah. Doncaster as, as well this year, I think Reedy was staying in the room opposite us, Lewis Reed, and it was my birthday and everything was upside down. But they, they're like, but, they don't just go in and just mess things up. Yeah. Everything was upside down. The chair was upside down. The telly was upside down. The bed was upside down. It was just all upside down. It was exactly where it should be, but it was just all upside yeah, down. It's happened to us so Brilliant. many times. Um, we do get people back though. Yeah. But we won't tell people that because no. then we won't be able to get people with it. No. <laughs> Yeah. All I'm saying is, no, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, anyway, I think it's time for the quiz, isn't it? I think it might be. So, Jonah's quiz master, master this week. This weekend. So, obviously, it's okay. 20 against Steve. Here we go. This so is the bit. We've got seven yeah, I'm questions. In, I'm in business now. Aren't um, ready? The seventh yeah, one is the bonus cool. one. So, okay. if it's free, all, we'll do the bonus one. But we'll, we'll probably do just do it anyway for that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, just first person say their name. And yeah. then there we go from that. Yeah. I've got my iPad this week, so. I'm Don't doing it from my phone. Um, right, come on. So, I think these questions are fairly fair. Um, you should both know the answers to okay. them. Just you get some fit. Okay. Um, so, question one. It's a who am I? Oh, God. So, he's been here while, obviously, you two are both at the club. Who am I? This player has played for the following. He started at Bournemouth. He then went to Bristol City. He went back on loan to Bournemouth, then signed for Bournemouth. He then went to Ipswich. Scott? Yep. Brett Pittman? Yep. Oh. <laughs> well, first, I didn't know about Bristol City. 
Good for him. That's yeah. where he made his name. Yeah. Was Bristol it? City. Oh, yeah. there's no Bournemouth. He scored loads of goals. So that shows my knowledge. That's what I know then. I'm kind yeah, of, it is Jonah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well I've done it. Yeah. Well, good, so, good counting. <laughs> second uh, question, I'm kind of annoyed on because we touched on it in a bit. I should have really thought that we were going to touch on it. but So, what was the score in your last game for Swindon? 4-3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, beat me to it. <laughs> so, as we touched on as well, question number oh, three. In the 2021 season, we obviously got relegated. But how many red points did we get relegated by? I've got three options. We got A. Hoops. Yeah. Two. No, we've got three options. Oh, so sorry, I was wrong earlier and you huh? didn't correct me. What do you mean? Well, I'm not going to say it because otherwise it would have ruined the question. Ooh. So we've got A2, Ooh, wow. B7. Interesting that he's thinking that. Or C5. Scott, C5. Yeah. I thought it was close to them. I thought we were close to them. I thought it was two or three. So when you were saying, like, if we had MK Dons and Wimbledon, I was thinking, yeah, we were two wins away. But I didn't want to, like, say... Uh, <laughs> we weren't too wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it was fine. Yeah, um, yeah. Well done for thinking ahead. <laughs> <laughs> normally, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, question number four. What is it, 2-1? Yeah. Obviously, you've played for both Swindon and MK Dons. Can you name three other players that have played for both Swindon and MK Oops. Dons? Louis Thompson. Is that right? Yeah. He's what he Bang oh, Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Louis Barry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Could Great shouts. As well, yeah. Great shouts, yeah. And Louis Barry. I said Louis Barry. Oh um Frenchie, sorry. Oh Frenchie. Frenchie was there, wasn't he? Oh Frenchie. Yeah. I only but chose three, but obviously they they were all they all played for both. Yeah. So that's two up. Interesting though that you played with Kane. Yeah. That MK Dons. Yeah, he was uh, in the same season as he played for Swindon as well, wasn't it? Yeah, because he, was, yeah, he second did the first half yeah. there and then got He played against Man City and, and then the day later yeah. we got a call there. Yeah. He going to MK Dons. Yeah. Um, so you've also played for both Swindon and Burnley. Can you name two players that have played for both teams? Mm. Are we allowed to say Twitney? Other than, other, than oh. other than Twiney, sorry, I should have said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that would be oh, too obvious. Played for both teams. Who's played for both? I can think of one straight away. I know who you're both thinking of. Well, obviously. <laughs> I can't I'm think of that. Blank here. Oh my god, we could be here a while. There's got to be a few over the years, yeah, surely. There's got to be. I could only find two, but there could be more. I'd... There's only two ever. Oh, well, there okay. will be there will be more, but I've just got I only picked two because they're the only two I could think of. I didn't. I don't know. I'll give I you don't... a clue. Yeah, go on, go on. They're both strikers. What? Scott. Yeah. Charlie Austin, Andy Williams. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, obviously, he's Charlie, he's but... still playing. He's a striker. I'm pretty sure he's still playing in the championship for a team. Hey? That begins with B as well. I can't really give too much more away. Am I being thick here? It's probably a lot I harder. I don't know. I think, I think we are, thick? maybe. I don't know, mate. I think we might have uh, to. Are we? I don't know. I'll so I guess say who he plays for now? I think he still plays for them. Sorry if I'm wrong. Birmingham. That's all right. Oh, hoops! Lukas Djukovic and Charlie Austin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he obviously yeah. played for Swindon. Wait. Yeah, yeah he obviously yeah, played for Swindon. Yeah. What's the score? So that's 3-2. Three, 3-2 two. Three, two to me? Oh, God. Come on. Yeah, I think he's still playing for Birmingham now. Might be. I'm yeah, not I think sure he is. Him. I think so. Yeah. So it's another yeah. one of the... Um, he played for the following clubs. Oh, you love know. these ones. Yeah, sorry. Um, so he was here, obviously, when you were here 20 years. Yeah. And okay. we worked it. Um, so he started off at West Ham. He went on on loan to Dundee and then to Wigan, and then he come to Swindon. He's not still at Swindon. I can say the other club, but um, you can't think of it from there. Oh, hoops! Yeah. Matt Palmer. No. Yeah. Started off at West Ham. He had a couple of loans before permanently signing for Swindon. And he signed here from where? From West Ham. I think he, his, obviously his contract just ended at West Ham. 
He was here before we started, but you would have already been here. Oh, okay, right. So right. We, we didn't sign him when I was working it. No, he was already no. here. Right, okay. He's on loan where? He was on loan at Dundee and Wigan Athletic, but he only played one game for Wigan, so. He's from West Ham. Shall I say the club, the club that he went to after Swindon? What after, position does he play? I'll say the club he went to after Swindon, Cambridge. Oh, hoops. Carnival. Yeah. Oh my God, how am I not getting <laughs> I knew that was no, going to get it away. How am I not getting that? So I just wanted to see if you would get it before I said the club after. I should have got that. Should've. I should have got you a few got, of them. I would never have got that if I had So what's that, 4-2? Oh, That's we're going to the bonus question anyway. That's poor knowledge I ran to out, me. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I ran out of questions, like, around what we were talking it's about. It's taken him three weeks. <laughs> it's taken him three weeks <laughs> to make this. <laughs> oh, um, wow. So this was just the bonus one. If you have, add Kevin De Bruyne's number, Scott Twine's number for us when he was in League One, and Lee Camp's number, what number do you get? Hoot? Yeah. 28. Yes. <laughs> I'm way off it here. Yeah. 17, 10 and 1. Yeah. Don't worry, Twine. Sorry, yeah. Twine. <laughs> Am I the first one that's been beat? No. Okay. No, that's our third win. Oh, so it? you're not. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. To be fair, the, the the Burnley one and Swindon was quite hard. Luca Djukovic. Really hard. Yeah, that was tough. To be that. fair, when I was looking at it, when you said no, Birmingham, no, really, I, I should have got. Yeah, I didn't even know he played at Burnley. To be fair, he went there after here, didn't he? Oh no, he went to Everton. Yeah, and then he went to Birmingham. I'm yeah. sure he did. I'm but that was a hard one. Yeah, I didn't want to say Cambridge for Carl Noor because I know that he'd probably give it away. I wanted to give you to a bit. He could have said where he was now. That would have meant. Maybe it a bit mm. more. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah. I'm annoyed at that. Yeah. Oh, you've enjoyed yourself, Twine. Yeah, I've quiz. loved it. I've yeah, loved it. Good. I've done the quiz, yeah. We've enjoyed having you. Yeah, cheers um, for coming on, mate. Also, <laughs> you're the first guest we've had that isn't a current Swindon Town player. Am I? Yeah. It's always been well, I, current Swindon players, but yeah. there you go. Now you're the first of many, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, there hopefully. might be stuff to come in the future with a few other people. Let's see what happens. But, uh, yeah. We've enjoyed it. Yeah. Donut, you had a good time? Yeah, cheer for your time, Decent. Twiny. Hope you've all enjoyed watching. Um, Scott Twine, everyone. Brilliant. Cheers, Twiny. <laughs> Cheers, guys. See you soon. Thank you.